Speaking of talk, broker talk. Yeah. All right, Dwayne. So we just covered a lot in reference to open house strategies. If you had anything to add to that, definitely feel free. But uh, we wanted to just talk a little bit about you know open house procedures. Sure. Uh, as of uh, gosh, was it July thirtieth or yeah, first of August? Oh man, it's so yeah. long ago. Uh, Seems like a long time ago, <laughs> doesn't it? I know. But, and things are, but things are smoothing out. I think a little bit, and, and we're learning all how to adapt to these practice changes, and, and that's that's a good thing. But open houses are one that we get quite a few questions on um, and how to handle those. So I'm going to go down a couple of different scenarios, uh, the first one being your listing, your open house, okay? Um, your, uh, the question oftentimes come in, do, what do I need to have a client sign or a party who walks through sign um, when they come in that door? Um, if you are representing the seller only, there is no requirement for any written documentation in order for that prospect to tour the property. So you're the listing agent, you're representing the seller only, you can let them tour the property, you can sell them. Um, if they want to make an offer on that property, they become an unrepresented buyer, right? And you would have an unrepresented buyer disclosure form for them to sign along with an agency disclosure acknowledging that the buyer understands that you represent the seller as seller's broker. So that's that's pretty straightforward. Um, sometimes we get the question, what about dual agency? And we don't recommend single agency, single agent, dual agency. Um, there might be odd cases when that is necessary, but it's gonna be rare. So if you get into that situation, you're not sure how to handle it, reach out to us as a broker team. Before you get in that situation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's helpful if it's before, yeah. So that's that's the one aspect that, that we see is, is pretty straightforward. The other one that's a little, uh, has a nuance to it is if you are not the listing agent, but you are a listing, or you are an agent with West USA holding another West USA agent's property open. How do we handle that? That's a little bit more difficult in the sense that Typically, that agent holding the open house, while technically does represent as a sub-agent of the, the listing agent, the seller, they are typically wanting to... Um, <laughs> rookie mistake. <Yep. laughs> All right, Todd's they're, buying burgers for everybody. Yeah. Um, they're typically wanting to hold that open house in order to what? To generate business, have new uh, buyers, and so, or potentially sellers as well. If the person walking through that door is a potential buyer, it's my advice that you consider having them sign at least a buyer broker to show property before you tour the property with them. Why? Because in the event that that buyer wants to make an offer on that property, that agent holding the open house will be a, writing that offer will be a limited dual rep and that triggers the fact that you got to have that employment agreement. Wouldn't that agent need to confirm with a listing agent first that the seller it has signed a uh, the real estate agency disclosure and election form indicating that they would accept and allow the c possibility of dual agency? Sure. Or, or yeah. limited? Yeah, I mean, that's, that's I guess, a given, and I should have said that. But, yes, as a, as a agent that's holding that open house on behalf of a listing agent, that's one of the things you do want to confirm is that the seller will and has approved a consent to limited representation um, through their listing agreement and on their agency disclosure when they did it. So. so so just to be clear, you're strongly advising it, but it's not necessarily a requirement. If I'm hosting your listing open, okay. and I'm not the listing agent, yeah. and a buyer comes through, you're suggesting I get them to sign a showing agreement, but I want to be clear, it's not necessarily a requirement. The only way it would not be a requirement, Mike, is if you are going to be a sub-agent of the listing agent representing the seller only. And that's not probably going to happen. So if the listing, if the buyer agent were to be, whole, excuse me, let me rephrase that. Should the additional West USA agent be the host of the event, not the listing agent? 
and they entered into just w knowing they didn't want to be asking everybody who walked through the front door to sign a buyer broker mm -hmm. to show agreement. So they decided, uh, f for many reasons, that they would initiate the conversation by saying, are you represented by anybody else? If they say yes, that's a whole different ballgame. If they say no, then obviously that might be a potential buyer or seller for you. Um, but you would bring them in, demonstrate the home to them, show them the feature benefits as though you were a listing agent, so to speak, uh, which also shows your acumen and why a buyer, why one of these people might be wanting to do business with you. But you go through that process, and then I think we all might consider the fact that we should ask that person, are you interested in buying this home at some particular point? And yep. they say, no, I'm not. And is there anything I could say that would change your mind? No, I really just don't like this house. Great. And then they could draw that imaginary line in the sand, step over it, say to the person, since you said to me you aren't already represented contractually by another firm, I would, are you interested in potentially uh, entering into one of those agreements? I'd be happy to work with you. And then they could move over, have them sign the buyer broker to show, and then move from there. You could, yes. That, <laughs> that, but the, the, the challenge is, is going to be when do you cross that, that line, right? And, and to be on the safe side, I'm advising that you get that conversation up front before they tour the home. And I know that's difficult. Believe me, I've been on the street. I understand it. Well, what's but, difficult, it's, it's just, it's different from what we've been saying for the last couple of months. Ooh. So, uh, well, you haven't been around. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. That's what Kyle said. So, <laughs> oh, really? We're going to blame it on Kyle. Okay. <laughs> we always, we blame everything. Yeah. And Nick. Yeah. But Nick's here, so we'll just blame it on Kyle. All right. All right. Let's talk about compensation. Yeah, compensation. That's a that's another one that uh, we get some um, questions on as well. Uh, the BBEEA, which is a buyer broker exclusive employment agreement, along with the buyer broker to show property. Um, so we we are seen coming across the uh, review desk quite a bit, uh, not quite a bit, but enough that I, th I think it's worth talking about. Where um, buyers have not yet quite adjusted to the fact that they've got to have an employment agreement. Agents mm -hmm. are, are getting there, but they're still some of them struggling. And so they want to make it a kind of a soft landing, right? And so they're um, communicating with this buyer, look, we'll just do a buyer broker to show property. We're going to negotiate with the seller to have a, you, them pay whatever compensation the seller will willing to pay. So we'll just put a zero on our buyer broker to show property and we'll just do it for <laughs> today. Well, Turns out that that buyer gets to see a property and they want to write an offer on it. And they put a, buyer, a seller compensation addendum in their offer for whatever, whatever. compensation, plus. you know. Zero yeah. plus. Yeah, <laughs> more than zero. Yeah. Let's put it that <laughs> way. Yeah. <laughs> and the seller agrees to it and they get that, all that paperwork then gets uploaded to our dashboard. That's a problem because of the way the settlement works. The, we are, just so everybody is listening out there knows, we are, as staff, reviewing your buyer-broker employment agreement and the seller compensation addendum, confirming that those two match or are less than the uh, amount that's on the buyer-broker employment agreement or the buyer-broker to show property. So if you put a zero on that buyer-broker to show property and end up going under contract, you're not getting paid anything. But who is getting that money? Guess who? <laughs> Mike, who's getting the money? Well, the, the buyer's getting it. But what I've learned, though, uh, West USA is not cutting a check to the buyer. It's going to be instructions from from, to, from the broker to the title company correct. saying That's correct. we're only collecting X amount. So I learned that one because yeah. um, we were trying to get a little cutesy on one of our deals. But um, – so, not Mike. You would not do that. <laughs> okay, so I got a buyer broker showing agreement. Okay, at zero. Mm -hmm. Okay, then we go to our property. Buyer says, "I like this." Could I then, when I'm putting together the offer and the seller commission addendum, then have them sign a buyer broker exclusive agreement? Because now I've transitioned. You can negotiating with my buyer for the showing agreement to the buyer broker agreement. Now the buyer broker agreement is going to show X percent. You can do that. And that's, that's acceptable. You would upload both of those to your file when it comes through. And that buyer-broker exclusive employment agreement with whatever number you've negotiated with your client would uh, supersede the buyer-broker to show at zero. So that is one pathway for you to get paid. But that needs to be done 
at or before writing that offer. Okay, so make sure you do that. I guess suffice to say on this subject is understand what this settlement agreement really means. You cannot, as a buyer's broker, get paid more than what's on your buyer broker exclusive employment agreement or your buyer broker to show property agreement. So do not get caught in the trap of trying to soften that that conversation with your client by putting a, a number in there that you're not willing to work for. Listen, there isn't been, and Dwayne, that's obviously awesome. Um, but we haven't been doing this long enough to see the lawsuits that are going to come from this. Um, you know, the one thing that we want to make sure is the whole purpose for these buyer broker contracts is to have an upfront conversation with these consumers before realistically you embark on any real estate related services, servicing them right. as, as your client. So by not, <laughs> by putting zero and then later changing it there, yes, it's like an addendum in the, in the next document would supersede the first one. Um, however, it could still be an argument. Yeah. Yeah. And he just, I know it's new for all of us yeah. and it's, it's a, uh, it's even more so for the consumer. Right. And so while we're adapting probably faster than the consumer, there's still consumers out there that are, are um, struggling with, with it. So. All right. I want to know if there's been any kind of evolution or change on our position. So here would be the scenario. Um, I have Todd sign a buyer broker agreement at two bagels. Okay. And I go show him the property. And then I have a conversation with the listing agent and find out that the seller is willing to pay three bagels. Has there been any change in our policy where allowing me or am I still prohibited to go back to the buyer broker agreement, create an addendum, increasing the buyer broker agreement from two to three bagels? Sure. So as we, as you know, that's one of the number one questions I'm still getting. Are you? Yeah. Okay. Um, as you know, there is a document, an addendum to the buyer tenant uh, employment agreement to be able to modify the compensation, um, to cancel the agreement, all those things. That's called a buyer tenant, um, uh, employment agreement addendum. That's the document we would use. Right. To be able to go from two bagels to three bagels is problematic, in our opinion. Okay. okay. Um, why? Because that extra bagel by this settlement agreement and for us to remain in compliance belongs to the buyer. And so... We discourage the fact mm -hmm. that uh, you're going to want to use that addendum to increase your um, compensation. It comes in a lot of times when, in new homes, right, where new homes are offering a, a, some sort of a bonus or additional. And, and so just understand when you're having that initial conversation with your client, what you put on that agreement is what you okay. agree to work for. And we should just point out, I mean, because we see it on Facebook, other brokerages <clears throat> are allowing their agents to do it. To go up or to, up to, to, to go up, and yeah. at the end of the day, w they could get in trouble. We just don't. We don't know. Um, there's, and there's a lot of moving parts. There's a, yeah. there's a lot of moving parts, yeah. and there's a lot of people, uh, you know, looking to yeah. sue. Yeah, I just wanted to just hey, really Nick. quickly. Hi. Um, there's a lot of brokerages doing a lot of things out <laughs> in the world right now. Um, a lot of uh, the companies that we are talking to that are bigger firms are very focused in on not having another round of litigation hit their company where there are other companies that are saying, eh, this is all ridiculous and they don't know what they're doing. So we're always going to hedge to the side of keeping our agents as safe as possible and making sure that their consumers understand that. So if you see another broker doing something a little bit different, let us know and we'll take a look at it. Uh, but always remember that we're doing things in the best direction that we can to keep everybody as compliant as possible. All right. So... <clears throat> This is an, another thing that just, you know, a little bit of confusion for people. Yeah. yeah. I am the listing agent. Dwayne, you're the buyer's agent. Yep. You send me an offer on behalf of your buyer, and hopefully you checked the seller commission addendum box at the bottom seller, <laughs> of the contract. Seller compensation. Compensation yeah, yeah. addendum. My seller says... I'm going to counter this, this, and this, and this, and I'm going to also counter the compensation to the buyer's agent where I don't want to pay him 
three bagels that he's requesting. I'm willing to pay him two bagels. Correct. And now we're in the counteroffer. What's the process? Right. And this was uh, something that, that our office um, came out with early on on how we wanted this done. And there's actually a form on your dashboard under the agent documents for uh, the process that we recommend, which was do not sign the seller compensation addendum that was submitted with the offer. When you're putting preparing your counter offer, prepare a new seller compensation addendum with the amount of compensation the seller is willing to, uh, to pay um, and include language in your counter offer that says that, you know, that the seller, there's a new seller compensation addendum attached that would uh, supersede the, the one that was submitted. That created a firestorm in the marketplace um, because um, the listing brokers or, or the buyer broker on the other side, um, they, um, they felt that that initial compensation addendum should be signed as because it's checkboxed on line 37 of the contract and therefore uh, and addressed in the counter offer that it should be signed. Um, respectfully, I disagree that it's um, that that's the way the process goes, but I can tell you that it became enough of a issue that our broker team got together and we have decided that um, it's not, we're not going to absolutely require to do it the way we are, we recommended. We would still prefer the recommended way and to follow the, the steps in that document on your agent uh, dashboard. However, if it's not you end up at the same place. So if you're going to not, if you're going to get pushback from the other side, then go ahead as a listing agent. Um, you know, have that SCA that was submitted signed and address it on the counter offer uh, with whatever the seller, say line ten of the of that SCA is going to be whatever the seller's willing to do, and and I, we'll end up at the same place, and hopefully we won't have any um, confusion as to what compensation is being paid. So a listing agent receives an offer with an SCA, mm -hmm. but the box isn't checked on the additional addenda. You certainly want to address that in your counter offer and make sure that that box is checked because you're going to get that requirement from an addendum standpoint if you go through if you go forward on that. Yeah, so don't try to think because they sent it to you, but the box isn't checked. You don't have to uh, it. present it or address it. Correct. Yeah. Does that help? Yeah, that helps. I'm just hesitant whether you want me to ask my next question or not. Go for it. <laughs> okay. That's what we're here for. Why are we going to get to a point? It seems to me it would be a lot easier just to deal with compensation on the additional terms section of the purchase contract. Oh, my word, Mike. 50,000 licensees on realtors. You imagine the language that you're going <laughs> to get from that? No, we don't want to even go down that road. Uh -uh. But you, but if you could find a path, then we would, could eliminate the need for the SCA. Yeah. No. Uh, uh, uh. Okay. <laughs> no. Well, the contract still also refers to a separately written compensation document. It does. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, <laughs> yeah, this is a lot of fun. Let's talk about dashboard uploads and file requirements. <laughs> yeah. Uh, my first thing to tell people is just don't take it personal. <laughs> Thank you. We want you yeah. to get paid. <laughs> right. That's, that's the whole thing of it. And that those requirements and the uploads and so forth are all there for your protection, our protection. And you can never put too much on that dashboard. You can, anything you got is probably good to upload there. Um, but we do get the question from time to time, when do I have to upload my buyer broker agreements, my buyer broker to show agreements, you know, any of that stuff. Those are just like any other document. They have to be uploaded by our policy within five days. The commissioner is very, very strong on the fact that brokers need to be reviewing those within the uh, statutory requirement of 10 days. So those um, uh, uploads need to be done right, uh, right away, essentially, even those that are only for one day period. We still got to get those up. If okay. I have a buyer broker to show and I never actually show that buyer any properties, we never actually get to show anything to either party, uh, the parties. Do I have to upload that document still? Yes. 
You yeah. sent that to they me as a as a buyer broker agreement fun fact. You didn't use well, it. I already had that one typed I up. That know. was going to be next week. <laughs> I don't know what you're doing, mind. Nick. <laughs> so, Dwayne, uh, adding on to that, when I, when they go to upload the buyer broker to show or the buyer broker exclusive employment agreement, uh, our requirements uh, include also uploading the real estate agency disclosure. And that is correct. Yeah. Yes, we want to include that with either one of those documents. And the review team that's working through this, they're doing this at the same time all of the agents are, all the consumers are. We didn't get a heads up. So if you get a weird requirement, if you get something that looks a little fishy, just use that agent response and there's no reason to yell. There's no reason to get frustrated. The team is doing their best as they can. If something gets added that's incorrect, we'll take it down. Um, you also always get more with sugar than you do uh, vinegar. All right. So when, I, when I'm uploading my buyer broker agreements, um, you know, within my five days, thank you, Julie, that's our amazing <laughs> transaction coordinator. We always get alert about additional fire, file requirements and Correct. just saying, hey, when there's a contract and so forth, mm-hmm. like if I, if we end up with an executed contract, would, wouldn't that be a separate transaction in the dashboard? So right now, yes, it's not a separate. Theoretically, that's where we're headed. Okay, um, yeah. But right now, we're working on some programming on the back end to try to get that set up. Yeah, once the new system is done, when you upload a contract, it's going to ask you which client buyer broker document you have to tie it to, and then the system will get very smart. We're actually very, very close to having that new system done. So I've heard that for a while, my friend. Calm down. <laughs> wow. Uh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> Last one, huh? Show, uh, show I'm, 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 I'm staying out of it now. Okay. <laughs> Showing your own listing. Um, uh, we get this question still quite a bit as well. Um, do I need a written agreement with a buyer to uh, that calls off a sign or off some of my marketing material or whatever? Um, and the answer, again, is only uh, if you're going to offer dual re- limited representation. So if you're going to show, get that call, show that property, you're representing the seller exclusively then there's no written agreement required. Okay, I just want to make sure everybody's listening. That's not the answer to what's on your screen right there, showing your own listing, meaning it, that's a for sale by owner. I'm selling my principal address. Sorry, no. Yeah. Yeah, I got a little confused. Yeah. Thanks for pointing that out, yeah. Todd. Appreciate yeah. that, pal. Yeah. No, no. Everybody I, was yeah. fine. Everybody yeah. was fine. What I, no, <laughs> no, the brokers wouldn't have been fine. <laughs> no, if it's if yeah. you're the principal in the transaction, yeah. no, yeah. you're, you're you right. You can That's never not, represent the other. You can side. never represent. Right. Right. But if this is you, the listing that you have with West USA, that's you're not the principal in. Right. Then, but if yeah. it is my principal. Yeah. Yeah. I could still show it. I just couldn't represent them. That's like correct. If I, if I got a for sale by owner and somebody calls me off my sign and wants to take a tour, mm-hmm. I can let them in. Absolutely. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. If it's your property, you can let them in. You can tour them. You just cannot ever represent the uh, the other party uh, on your own personal deals. So. so with that, so obviously I got a little confused. And maybe it's just because I'm in the process of selling my own principal property. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So... Uh, <laughs> Let's talk about that for a little bit. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But uh, so, I, I, you know, it was a good reminder for me, uh, and I think it's something that, that uh, a lot of our agents don't understand. When you're selling your own property, mm-hmm. you own the property, and you're the listing agent of our policies revolving uh, home warranties. Yes. Yep. So that's part of our um, policies in order to get uh, E&O coverage on your uh, own sale of your own property. Um, It is a requirement that you uh, provide a home warranty or that the buyer uh, elects um, on the purchase contract on their offer not to, uh, not to ask for it, not a want, doesn't want a home warranty. Okay. So either one of those happen, you're still going to get the requirement when you get the, if it comes in with no home warranty to that, a home warranty must be um, uh, included with the, uh, the, Closing. If you do get that requirement, just reach out to one of us brokers, and if it's checked on the con- on the purchase contract that it's that elects not to have one, then we can clear that requirement. And Does if it, the buyer wants to pay for their own, can they? Yes, okay. absolutely. It just has to have one. Yeah. Uh, what happens if the buyer and and this doesn't hardly ever happen, but just because it could? Uh, what happens if the buyer doesn't even want to do a home inspection? Does the seller have to, does the agent owner have to pay for home inspection or at least offer it to the buyer? And then if not, what kind of disclosure? Yeah, absolutely. That's another one of the requirements is a buyer must conduct a home inspection. Uh, if they don't, reach out to us brokers and we'll help you walk through it. Um, it's 
the problem becomes if there is an issue later on down the road, the carrier may decline coverage uh, based on the fact that that buyer didn't do the, the home inspection. So, um, yeah, we're going to have to walk through that and, and have some documentation that they elected not to on their own. So when can, does West USA allow an agent who owns the property to sell a property, not putting it in the MLS and selling it for sale by owner, a true for sale by owner? Um, or does all properties that are sold, if you're a licensed agent with West USA, is it required that you put it in the MLS and through the broker? We're a little different on that when we do allow owner agents to, to sell their own property outside the brokerage. But make sure you touch base with us so we can guide you through that process. All right, I just a uh, little shout out to our broker team. Um, even though you know you get a little, you get a little You're testy with me, Dwayne. Trying to butter uh, me up, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> we got a meeting after this. You deserve it. Uh, I, uh, my pool guy, guy who uh, cleans my pool every Monday morning. He's a licensed real estate agent. I've been working on him for two years to come over, and he keeps bouncing around brokerages. And so, I, I went out there this morning, and I'm I'm chatting with him and ask him how he's how things are going. He goes, yeah. He goes, I'm I'm uh, in the middle of my first uh, vacant land purchase. At, at representing the buyer, and I'm like, oh boy. I, I, I mean, I just started talking about all the different nuances and, and so forth. Yeah, yeah. I go, but you know, just I go, but don't listen to any other agents. Just talk to your broker. And he goes, yeah. He goes, he goes. I'm not happy with my broker. My broker will tell me what not to do, but won't have any conversations or suggestions for me. And I'm like, I'm like, bro, that's a problem. <laughs> I mean, that's a huge problem. Yeah, yeah. And so it just, it's just a, a good reminder for all of us. Uh, we've got an amazing broker team, and just if you got any questions, guidance, and and help, um, it's not just hey, don't do this. It's let's help you out we'll, and appreciate that. We'll try you. to give you uh, um, solutions as well. Yeah. All right, leave you with the quote of the day. This was tough. I read it like five times. I, I didn't even know how to read this one, but uh, I'll let you take a crack at it, Nick. Oh, thanks. Cool. I appreciate that. Courage is resistance to fear, mastery of fear, not absence of fear. So I don't even know what that means. Courage is resistance to fear, mastery of fear, not the absence of fear. So you're going to have fear in your life. I'm, you're going to deal with fear, but having courage is walking up to fear and saying, get out of my way. I've got stuff to do. I prefer Mark Twain's quote that, you know, beer is proof that God loves us and wants us to be happy. That's more of my Mark Twain <laughs> God style. God does love you, Mikey. I appreciate everybody joining us today. Go out and sell a home. <laughs>